and talk about building switchboards and switchbox. Um, I know these guys have used switchbox. Uh, any of you in the back, have you used switchbox before? Have you ever seen it? That, yes, no, maybe. So, yeah, well, we'll take a look because I know you probably do more with the Astra side of the house, but we just wanted to give you a look and see what the GUI looks like and how you can do things from the GUI. The session before this, we actually built an IVR, like in a menu tree, and we'll kind of use that in here. But uh, this session is, I just want you to see what the switchboard looks like, and we'll, we'll, we'll dive in here in just a second. But before I get started, I'm Steve Jacob. I'm the channel sales engineer for Digium. I've been there seven years, and it's uh, actually, I think it's eight years. Uh, it's gone by so fast. I've been there eight years, and uh, I support our outside channel sales reps. I also support our resellers. So if any of you guys are resellers or end users, um, I can you know, help you with that. There's my contact information. If you have any kind of like how-to type questions, that's what I can help you with. So what I'm planning on doing today is, is first telling you what switchboard is, and then what we'll do is I wanna do a demo because I thought it would be better for you to actually see the switchboard in action because if you haven't seen it, and I'm talking about it to come, I just thought it might be easier to see a demo, then we'll actually go through and kind of work our way backwards. We'll look at the components and show you how I set things up, how you configure those in the admin interface and in the user interface, and then we'll just kind of open the floor up for questions and answers. Feel free if you have questions while I'm presenting, just raise your hand or just, you know, if you have a question at the moment, feel free to ask, ask it then. You don't have to wait to the end. So what is Switchboard? Well, well, Switchbox is basically, to start off, Switchbox is our GUI that we've put on top of Asterisk that, that we've uh, provided. We actually put this in an appliance. So for those who aren't developers, or even if you are a developer, and you're looking for more of a cookie cutter type install, something that is supported, because I know a lot of Asterisk developers that as their business grows, they need someone to support this. So this way you can, you'll see that the interface is very easy to use. It's a lot easier to train someone to learn the GUI than it is to teach them to write code in Asterisk. So it just, it makes life a lot easier as your business grows to have that skill base, you know, have not having to hire Asterisk developers. You can hire just, you know, a tech that can help and this is very easy to train on. So, so Switchbox is our turnkey product. Switchboard is one of the interfaces in Switchbox. There's three, you have an admin interface, which we'll take a look at, like I said, after, kind of after the fact, user interface and Switchboard. Switchboard is our call control panel. It's the produ productivity tool that the end users can use. It's really helpful for either a receptionist or if you're a queue member or an agent, kind of those power users. It allows you to have call control, you can record the calls, you can transfer calls, you can see, depending on what permissions you've been granted, you can see who people are talking to, how long they've been talking, and as far as queues go, you can actually see how long people have been waiting in the queue, how many calls the agents have taken. So there's a lot of information there, you know, like I said, power users, managers over queues, it comes in really handy. There's no additional license required for this. If you have a SIP extension on Switchbox, it comes with Switchboard. So it's not like it's just an operator console that just the operator gets. Every single SIP extension in the system has access to the Switchboard. So let's just click over to a live system here. Excuse me there. So one thing that's changed, I mean, we, we just went through a redesign of earlier this year, kind of in March, before switchboard was a switchboard. Now we call them switchboard layouts. So you can have multiple layouts, as many as you want. And also I'm gonna show you how the end user can build these and how the administrator can build these. So it can actually be done in two different places. 
So I just wanted to start off by showing you some of the things that you can do from the switchboard. So the panels or widgets that you see on the screen, I've got one that's called My Calls, another one that's voicemail, parked calls, Google Maps, and just contacts, which here I've labeled my Arizona offense. I've, my theme here is uh, the Arizona Cardinals since I'm in Phoenix, I thought we would uh, kind of play with the football team here today. So I am logged in. In the top right corner, you can see I'm logged in as extension 1003. If I wanted to place a call to one of the other phones, I can hover over the name of that. It pops up a contact card. So in this case, if I want to call Carson Palmer, I, can, I have the options to dial his extension or call his voicemail directly without ringing his extension, intercom, and then at the bottom, I can open up a chat panel if I just wanted to chat with him. Maybe he's on the phone. I just need to ask him a quick question. Hey, I see you're on the phone, but I wanted to ask you a quick question. You know, what's that play, or when are we going to snap the ball in this huddle? I don't know if they have switchboard in the huddles, but I don't know. That'd be a really fun. But also video. We have if the if your laptop or computer has a camera and it supports video, you can actually do video. You can do screen sharing. So there's some really new fun stuff in here. But if I want to place a call, I just click on the dial button. Phone rings. I answer that. Let me mute this so we don't have a bunch of echo. So I was able, I'm actually, one of, or 1003 is the middle. So I actually called this phone by pushing that button. So from here, I can do, you can see I can either put the call on hold, I can transfer that to another phone, I can park it, record, I can end the call. And one thing you're going to see with Switchboard, there's a lot of duplication as far as what you can do in Switchboard and on the phone. Obvi obviously, I can record and park and do all those things from the phone. So again, it just depends. Are you a power user? Do you want other things going on, you know, where you can see where calls are coming from, see everyone that's on the system? So just, we put that in two different places. Some people may not use switchboard, so you still want all that functionality in the phone. So if I want to park a call, so if, just to kind of show you some of the things we can do, if I want to park the call, I just press the park button, which also on the phone, there's a park key that would park it. It tells me where the call is parked. And um, what I can do from here in the panel, anybody on the system can call extension 7000, or if they have their switchboard open, they can actually just click on that entry and it'll actually transfer the call back to them. So you can do that from the switchboard. If I want to transfer the call, and I'm actually, I'm going to, because um, I was on that call, I meant to actually call from a different, a different phone, but because I want to come back to the call park to show you how it's tied into the phone, how we can do status indicators with parking lots. But if I want to transfer this call, I can say transfer, then I can hover over the name, and then it gives me another contact card. I can either send it to voicemail in orange, in the orange settings, I can send it to voicemail, or I can complete the transfer. So now I've transferred that call away from myself. So my calls panel, it's blank, it's empty now, because I don't have the call, but if you look over here under my contacts panel, I've got a green bar next to Carson and David. The green bar is basically the BLF that's showing up on the switchboard, so I can see that someone's on the phone. Now, the information to the right under caller, in this example, I've actually I went into the admin and I gave myself privileges to be able to view someone else's call and actually monitor whisper barge and record. Things, those, we call those extended permissions. They are off by default. So the default would be, I would just get the BLF that I'd see that they're on the phone. I would not see who they're talking to, but because I've granted myself permissions to see who they're talking to, I can actually see that Carson and David are talking to each other and how long they've talked. I can hover over the headset, and this is where I have those other extended permissions. If I were a, maybe a supervisor over a tech or 
center or pre-sales and I wanted to be able to listen to calls, I could, I could just hover over the monitor and press that and actually would ring my phone and I can monitor their conversation. I could whisper into one side or the other and talk to them. Maybe this is a good training tool. So if you've got someone in tech support and you're trying to train them and maybe they're struggling a little bit, you can actually whisper in the, into their ear and coach them and tell them what they need to say. You can also barge onto the call, be like a three-way call. So, hey, let me bring my supervisor in and get authorization to do whatever we need to do. So I can barge in. I can also record their conversation and I can go back and listen to that at a later time. So now I'm gonna park, I'm gonna park this call again. Because I wanted to show, so again, it's back in the panel, but over here, if you can see, it might be a little hard to see from there, but on the phone, I've got a green LED on one of my line keys. What I did was, is I programmed that phone to say, I want to monitor extension 7001. Anytime there's a call parked at 7001, all I have to do is press that, and now the call is transferred to me. So I was able to do that from the key and also from the panel below, and you can see I have the call back again. So that's, a, that's one way that I can move all these calls around using the switchboard. The, back to the contacts, you'll see like the available status, and you'll also um, see the status in the top right corner. On the phone, I can change this to, there's a long list of statuses, whether it's do not disturb, ch chat, extend it away. You'll see it updates on the panel. And of course, this is the one I'm logged in, so it also changes at the top. In Switchboard, we've integrated this between all the phones, so I was able to change my status from the phone, or I can also come up here, and well, I, you can see all the different statuses here. I can now change my status back to available, and it changes it back to available on the phone. So de again, depending on whether you're in switchboard, you're on the phone, you can change that status back and forth. Now the Google Maps, of course I've already got, um, oops. I'm gonna call into the system. Now I've ar it's already given me a pinpoint for, um, whoops, I messed it up, there you go. Why don't I have one of you, will, will someone be willing to call in? Now, I know you're from Canada, so it's not gonna give me a pinpoint from there. Someone willing to call a DID and when you get a prompt, um, type in extension uh, 1003, the DID is 256. We'll make this interactive to keep y'all awake. Uh, See, 256-970-2855. Now that's going to hit my main IVR, kind of after the prompt gets started, just hit 1003. Unless you wanna order Arizona tickets. and uh, 1003, 1003. So he just called into the main IVR, and part of the IVR says, hey, if you want to, if you know your party's extension, dial it now. So he called, so now on my phone, I'll just answer this real quick so it doesn't disappear. So it showed me who's calling, but the Google Maps gives me a pinpoint where the call's coming from. So, do what? Well, where, let me rephrase that. Where his phone, where he's from. <laughs> He's out obviously in Arizona, he's not in Rapid City. Um, <laughs> so, but this is just to show you how Switchbox, the panels can be designed to, in this case, Google Maps just takes his caller ID, gives me a pinpoint, and kind of drops it on the map. Other things that you can do from this panel, on the right hand side is, this is just a collapsible contact screen and by default, I have, well, is on my contacts. I, can, I have all contacts, 
which are all the contacts or all the extensions that are listed in Switchbox. So I can do the same things. Now, if I wanted to call someone in here, I can scroll down and find um, those names. Let's see. Again, if I wanted to call Carson Palmer again, you can hover over that name and call that. So anywhere you see a name, you can click on that name and get a contact card. In a prior version, we only had a phone book, so you always had to do your calls from the phone book, but now anywhere that you see a name, you can click on that, it pulls up a card. The difference over here, you're not going to get real-time status. So if someone changed their status to available or do not disturb, you're not going to see that unless you open up the card and see what that is. So like here, it says, hey, Carson's available. So I could place a call from there. The dots over here tell me whether switchboard is open. So, you know, you could, maybe you wanted to do a chat or a video chat with someone, and maybe it was Larry Fitzgerald, he doesn't have his switchboard open. Well, there's no reason for me to attempt a video call with him over switchboard because his switchboard's not open. But this tells me that it's there. This also allows me to do other filters. So we're gonna talk about, again, I'm gonna go back to admin and tell you how to do this, but there's a tag section. So if you have different tags, whether on our example, it might have offense, defense, ticket sales, apparel sales, maybe you've tagged different people in different areas. If I only wanted to see the people that were tagged as offensive players, then I could select that and get just those people. And then as far as my contacts go, I'll take you, this is kind of a, it's similar to the admin. The admin, what they do, it, it gets pushed to everyone, but you can make your own personal list and tags, and we'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. But you can also sort by that. So I mentioned there's multiple layouts. So this is, I just call this my default layout. If I click on the little monitor symbol, I've got another layout that I'm, you know, just I'm calling this my Q panel. So again, before when I had one switchboard, I'd have to try to cram a lot of stuff in. Sometimes I had to overlap, I had to collapse. But this way, depending on what I'm doing, maybe it's just a normal day, I'm making calls, I just want my default screen that I had up before, that's fine. Well today, they've asked me to, hey, you need to jump in the queue, it's gonna have you know, we're, we're, we're making it to the Super Bowl. We expect to have a lot of ticket sales. So I need you to jump on the queue and help out today. So with the, at the top, we have we called Wallboard. So this, now this is some of the same information that you see below, but you can obviously see if you put this on a spare monitor, if this was something that was in a TAC or NOC or something, you might have an extra monitor and have all your different wallboards for your different queues. So the agents can, at a quick glance, I can see that you know three out of my five agents are logged in. So far today, we've taken a couple calls, we've missed one, we've had a handful that are abandoned, our average wait time. So it just gives me information that's going on in the queue. Below that, I've got queue member activity, so I can tell whether they're logged in, logged out, who they're talking to and duration. And then below that, I have an overview, which can be multiple queues. So here I've added two different queues into one panel where I can see tickets and apparel. Now when you build these, you have the option, that's down in this one, you have the option to show the members or not. So if I said I did not want to see the members, basically I'd be getting the same information as the wall board, but it's obviously a lot smaller. But if I want to see what the agents are doing, this is where I can see what the agents, you know, how many calls they've taken, how many they've missed, whether they're logged in, logged out. So I'm going to call in again. Whoops, not with a partial number, I'm not. And Donald, you're free to call back in again and press an option, option one or two. Oh, oh, actually. Actually, hang on, let me do this the right way. 
make this a little more fun here. Don't let Thank the... you for calling the Arizona Cardinals organization. That's if Allison. So I'm going to press one for ticket sales. So I'll go ahead and unplug the music so I won't <laughs> put you to sleep up there, out there. So here, now that I have called into the queue, I can see that there's one call waiting, see what their wait time is. You can also see some banners. I've set my thresholds here just so I can see it change. So one of the things we can do with notifications, I said, hey, after 15 seconds, I want to know that someone's been waiting in the queue for 15 seconds. Now that's obviously low, but you'd probably set a threshold. This way, you as a supervisor would see, hey, I need to get more people in the queue or find out why not everyone's logged in, get someone to take that call. And also you saw in the right-hand corner, I'd have notifications, banners that flash. So there's a lot of di a few different ways that you can see notifications. And I'm gonna go ahead and answer this call. So we saw the call waiting, and now that I've answered, I can see that David Johnson has the call. And again, because of permissions that were granted, I can see who he's talking to, how long he's talked, and then out beside the entry, you'll see a queue for a queue call. So this way, you as a supervisor can distinguish between someone who's on a queue call versus someone who's just on a phone. Because it might be, hey, I'm going to call my buddy and talk to him. It's like, oh, Steve's on a call. but. You know, is it, a, is it a work call? Is it a personal call? So that little cue symbol tells me that he's actually taking a cue call and not talking to his buddy. And then once we hang up, I guess I gotta turn it from here. Once we hang up, you'll notice down here by David's name, there is a yellow symbol there. So that's the wrap up time. So maybe we've got a database that I want him to go in and enter some information. And after 30 seconds, that will go away. And then if there's another cue call, that'll come in right behind it. So this way he can do what he needs to do without being disturbed. And, not, and, he, and it's not up to him to have to worry about pausing his phone or, or logging out. This way it's set. And it, that's programmable. It was like 30 seconds by default, but you can set that for whatever you want. The other thing you can do, now I would like maybe, well, let's see, let me, I can call from up here. I'm going to get, try to get a couple calls in the queue here. We'll take these off so we don't hear that. Okay, so I have several people in the queue now. Again, I've set the threshold. I can see how long they've been waiting. Now, another thing I can do is if you'll notice under queue calls waiting, I've got a column that says assignment. It's set for normal. So what that is, it's just set for the, whatever the ringing strategy that I set up for this queue. I think it's round robin in this case, that it's just going to distribute the call to the agents in a round robin fashion. But now I have some call control where, you know what, I really need to talk to Larry Fitzgerald. He's, he's called in twice, I know he's at the bottom. I can come over here and I have different options that I can play with now. I can actually move him to the top and make him the number one priority if I want and you'll see that it, the assignment changed from normal to priority. Or if I know that he needs to talk to Donald I can actually assign him or, you know, assign him to an agent so I can push that. Or 
Maybe I need to talk to him. I can actually answer that call. So I can have the call come to me. So this is something that's relatively new where we've had the call control. And if I want to set it back to the priority, it'll sort them again by who called who at what time. So I'm not helping my abandon rate. I need to take more calls. Uh, other things you can do as part of call, call control, let's say that Carson left early. He's still in the queue, his phone's ringing, and he's gone and he didn't get log out. As a member, as a manager, I can actually log him out of the queue so that way he, the calls aren't coming to his queue. So that should change to an X here hopefully pretty quick. There we go. So you can see there's a lot of information here at your fingertips if you were a queue manager and you wanted to see information that's going on. And then just kind of to finish up the switchboard panel in the top left panel, oops, sorry, in the top left there's a dial pad. So if this is maybe a number that you wanted to call but you didn't want to have to punch it into your phone, you could actually do a copy and paste maybe out of an email or a browser and actually drop it into the, the panel there and dial. We also have a couple plugins called Fire Dialer and Chrome Dialer. If you're actually browsing something from one of those browsers, you can actually do a right click and dial from there if you have the plugin installed. So there's ways to dial even if you're in the browsers. Let's see, I showed you how to change your status. You'll notice here under the bell, it's notification. So throughout uh, my demonstration, you'll see like missed calls, received calls, incoming calls. You know, maybe the queue was, we we're over a threshold. So I set all these notifications and you can see that I can, well here it lists all the different notifications that came in while I was on the phone. So here's some of my queue where it says queue threshold exceeded. So if I wanted to glance at all that, I can. I can actually dismiss all of those or individuals. And then right next to this is where I set up my notifications. So maybe I don't want all the notifications that I just saw, but, but here I can set these up. And I think this really, because we have the notifications, it makes Switchboard a lot more user friendly now. Because if, let's say someone only has one monitor, they might have Switchboard in the background or behind something. Well, you may not know that someone sent you a chat. I mean, you'll know if you're getting a phone call, but you might not know that, you know, queue thresholds are exceeded. You might not know that someone sent you a chat. Could be someone forwarded you a voicemail directly without calling you. So this way you're actually getting banners. You're also getting little bubbles on the tab, red, little red bubbles telling you that something has, uh, that there's a notification that you need to do something with this. So any questions on switchboard itself or what it can do? Because um, now we're gonna kind of, we're gonna dive in and actually take a look at the interfaces to show you how we created some of the things we created. Any questions on switchboard stuff? Yes. Yes, yeah, so, so his question was, is there like um, collaboration, screen sharing, video? Now the video's been there for, for a while. It's uh, using WebRTC, it's browser to browser video. So again, your laptop or computer has to have a camera and support that. And I believe it's Chrome and there's a certain version of Chrome that you have to make sure that it supports WebRTC for that to work. Something that's new, in, right up here where it says start a guest chat. We've, we've just added screen sharing. So now I can, and it's not just internal to Switchbox, I can actually click on start a guest chat. It gives me a link here that I can copy and paste and send that to somebody I need to work with and they can actually open up and it'll share our two screens together. If it's Switchbox, I can just go to you know, I can click on someone here 
and I have the video chat, I have the video button in the bottom right corner. So if it's on switchboard, I can just select video straight from switchboard. But if it's someone outside the system, I can send them this link and we can share our screens. Now, it's screen sharing, but it's, it doesn't have the control because I think you said, um, you said something about controlling. Yeah. Correct. There's no taking over. It's not like a join me or go to meeting where you can actually take over and share your mouse. And, but, uh, but you can at least see, because I mean, this has been very helpful already. A lot of times if people say, hey, how do I set this up? Or I've been doing this. And it's like, I'd really like to see what you're doing or I'll show you how to do it. So even though it's just, you know, seeing it is huge. Uh, but, but this does not have the take control over the I d I'm not sure. I don't. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Not to say we can't, because obviously there's other applications that do that. But this is again. We've added collaboration. We've added video, screen sharing stuff. That's this. That's good. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you would have to. You would have to use the link. I, wouldn't, I would not be able to just click on the entry and do the video across the pier. I'd have to use that link and send it. So you could, but it just... Well, I mean, you can share the screen. Uh, now, we don't do video conferencing, so it's only one-to-one. -one. Uh, but just video, yes, I could video with you. It would just be, I would have to, I would not be able to just pull it from the switchboard and treat it like it's an internal extension, I would have to actually send you the link and then let you open that up and use it that way. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not 100% sure. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, I'm just not, I'm not 100%. I'm not 100% sure on that. Yes. Yes, yes, so, it, so your question was, do I have like reporting that I can do? Yes, yes, this is, this is like the real time, and actually that's kind of a good lead in to the admin interface. Let's see here. So his question was on reporting. So here under reporting, it's broken up into two sections. I have calls and queues. Whoops, sorry. So queues, so I can come in here and queue reports is where you're gonna have most of your information. So at the top, you specify your date range. Then you can either do queues or queue members. And if you select queues, you can see over here on your reporting field side, all the different stuff that you can report on. So total calls, completed, abandoned, redirected, average, entry, weight, talk. Um, you also have different breakdowns. Maybe you want it by day of week, hour of the day, talk duration, wait time. So based off the different parameters you select, you'll get the different reports. So that's queues, but then you can also run reports on members. You kind of have the same breakdowns that you had, well, fewer. You can have your breakdowns, but now you can see completed calls, missed calls. So that is built in. And, th and this is just running those reports manually. We also have scheduled reports. So let's say there was a specific report you wanted at the end of the day and at the end of the week that you could just have you set it up one time and just automatically email that report to you. So now let's take a look um, at some of the things that we did to make the switch box work. And actually, I'm going to start with, I guess, let's start with groups and tags, because I know that's one of the things that you were asking. So groups, there's, there's two features in the box. It's groups and tags, and there's a little bit of overlap, and the reason there's two is groups have been in there since day one. Tag is a new, ver uh, new feature as of version six. Obviously, if we would have done this from scratch, 
from the get-go, there'd probably just be one or the other, and they'd do everything. But because groups were so entrenched all the way through Switchbox, we didn't want to have to remove all of that and rewrite all that from scratch. We left groups as is, and then we created the new tags. Groups were used in places like setting permissions. Like if I had permissions over technical support, I could say Steve's extension has permissions over support, and I'll go into permissions and show you what that looks like. So that's where groups were used, things like that. Also, if I wanted to create a queue, I could say I'm gonna create a sales queue. I want everybody in this group to be sales. I'm just gonna drop them in, into the queue extension. It just makes it real easy to configure. Tags, now what you're doing is you're labeling or tagging individuals or extensions. And really where this comes into play is after you tag these, when you get into your contacts apps and on your switchboard and you're on your phone, like when I showed my switchboard when I had the Arizona offense, I could come in here and create another tag and just say, you know, Cardinals. And when I say link as a tag, I'm actually, when I say link to contact tag, it's actually creating a group and a tag at the same time. And now I can come in here and select the extensions that I want to add into this group. Now, if you, you could create your groups early and put this in a template and then actually add people after the fact. So even though you don't, you, it might be a new install and you don't have any extensions to add, go ahead and build your groups, build your tags, because in a template you can say, I want to assign everybody from this template to offense, defense, or whatever the different, the tag you might want to give. So what this does for you, you can use it in a template, but as an end user, you can subscribe to a tag. So what I just created here, as an end user, I might say, I want to subscribe to the Arizona Cardinal tag. And what that does for me, it allows me to bring, create like a phone book inside my switchboard or my phone. Without this, I would have to go to every phone and say, I need an Arizona Cardinal phone book for this phone, then the next phone, and I'd have to do that over and over again. So this is why this is really helpful. Now you just have to, as an admin, just do it one time, let people subscribe to it, or if you know you want them to have it, you can actually push it in to them in a template. And while we're talking about tags, since, like I said, there's overlap, I'm going to hop over to contacts. This is another way to manage your tags. So I selected like five people that I wanted to be in as far as being tags. But if I want to, you can see that uh, here. So that's where I put... This is where I put Carson Palmer in a, in, as a cardinal. Maybe I want, here's someone, Chris Ryan, maybe I want to put him in, and oh, there's two Chris's. We'll put both of those in. So I can check the box, and then at the top, I've got tag contacts, and I can add all the tags that I want Chris to have. So I want to add him to the offense, but I also want to add him to the overall cardinal team as well. And I can add and delete from here. So you, again, you can see the overlap where I made contacts and tags from the groups, but I can also make tags over here in contacts and manage that. You, here's where you can actually make tags, just individual tags without a group. So if you didn't want to make both at the same time, you would come here and you can manage your tags from this se section. Now I know you said you wanted to talk about tags. Is there something specific? that you were looking for, just kind of wanted to see what it looked like. Have you upgraded to this? Yeah, just... we, have, we have lots of tags. Okay. We have multiple tags that are set up. Yeah, and it's really helpful. I mean, he, he probably did his install prior to tags, and of course we're on video, so I don't want to see. <laughs> but, but yes, this makes life a lot easier now that we've got the tags where you can push phone books to people. So, so this, as an admin, this is really, really big. It may not sound like much, but it, trust me, it will make your life a lot easier where you can have the tags and push those to individuals. And then I mentioned permissions. 
So here under setup and permissions, this is what we call the extended permissions. So this is where, now I, I put the all, all in there just so I have that. By default, it's completely blank. If I wanted to, again, assign, maybe I want to say Carson has permissions over the Cardinal group. And he has permissions to do all of these things. Now this all, all kind of trumps everything. Pretend that second one's not there. So what you do in the real world is have Carson over his group. If there was another manager over their group. So that way I can only see what's going on for the people that I'm managing. I can't, if there's another group, I can't get in and see what's going on there. So you can actually control who sees what. Under tools and Google Maps, I mean, uh, excuse me, switchboard widgets. So the Google Maps came from this section where this is just a sample app that we include. So if you want someone to have the Google Maps, you can come in, you can see here that I've given a, that to a handful of extensions, I can add. Now right now it says 10 extensions. It just comes with 10 by default. If you need more, you just call support and it's free of charge, but they'll, this is actually an app that resides on our server, our server, so we kind of control the license there. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> but this is how we can control the license. Just call, it's free, so whoever needs this. Then when they go to build their switchboard, they actually have that. So now let's log in. So you've seen the components. You've seen how switchboard works. Now I'm going to log in as another person. Let's see here. So let's say I want to build a switchboard for Carson. So now this is the end user side. And just to show you there's that the end users can do some of the things the admin, but this only relates to the end user, not anyone else. You can see that I have my contacts and I have status options and time frames. So I can build some things too as an end user, but I'm the only one that can see these features. But now that I want to build a switchboard, excuse me, switchboard, I just click on the switchboard button. Oops, I actually need to, here we go. So now that I'm logged in as Carson instead of the other one, I have a blank layout, so I click on the layout button, and if I want to edit the default layout, that's highlighted, I say edit, I can change the name here if I want to in the top, but what, what you do here is underneath add widget, depend, depending on what the administrator gave you access to, like, like here under custom widgets, Google Maps, that would not be there unless we did what we just did. So I gave them permissions to see this widget, otherwise they wouldn't see it. Now not everything is controlled by the admin. I think everything else, really everything else under this add widget is there by default, except for Q stuff. And I'll kind of show you how I built that. Built that. But if I want to do like kind of how I built that first panel, I just start clicking on the widgets, I start bringing those in and then once I get them all in here, I can rearrange those to the way I like. like. So you can see it's real easy. So the, for the end user to build this, it's very simple. And if I wanted, so here's where contacts and tags come back into play. So if I, if the admin hadn't created a tag or if I didn't create a tag and I wanted to build a phone book, I could but I would just have to go through contacts and I would have to select each contact. But then the next person on the next phone, he would have to do that or she would have to do that as well. So by creating tags, the, the administrator did this for us. All we have to do is say Cardinals. I can actually give it a title so I can see what this is. 
when I have my contact panel up open. So now I've brought in all the different contacts. So it, you can see how easy that was. And then I hit save. And now, because I can make multiple layouts, I don't have to jam everything on one layout. I want to make a queue layout. So I'm going to say I want new. So now I can build a switchboard layout that has all the queue panel information in it. So I just start going through. Now the overview, this is where you can have one or multiple queues listed in the overview. And I mentioned that you could either show the members or not show the members. So if you show them, obviously you'll get the members. If you don't, it's going to look just like the wall board, but without the members. I can set a threshold time, so it's... In this case, I'm going to say, hey, after 30 seconds, I want to be notified if someone's been waiting in the queue for more than 30 seconds. Calls waiting. So now I just start bringing this stuff in and moving it around. Not from the switchboard, but yes, actually, let me go back to, um, he's asking, can you do external contacts? So if I go to my contacts, Here's an icon in the middle that says external contacts. Yeah. I was just wondering if I, if I missed something in the switchboard. Oh. I wasn't somewhere that I didn't know where from, Okay, from, no. From, no, you have to come here to add the external contacts. I think you're, you're just asking if it's already there, just say add. Yeah. yeah. But while we're here, external contacts can be put in here too. And this might be. Yes and no. There's over here, when I say yes and no, right now, and this is changing. This is something that's going to change in a, a couple releases in the future here. Right now, um, oh, I'm in the user, end user level. Let me get back to admin. <clears throat> For the end user, no. But on the admin side, when I go to contacts, Under directory, I can import external contacts, but right this is an old feature. So what, what, I'm, what I mean by that is this is basically the, what it was before version six. And when you imported your file, it only shows up on your contacts of your phone, not your contacts that this section here on the GUI. So it's, it's only on your phone. So you can import and you can see them on your phones, but that's the only place. There's been feature requests submitted, and I heard this week that this is a future feature that we're actually going to kind of integrate these together. So, so in the future, it'll end up, yes, you can still import, but it'll also show up in this screen. Today, you, you, it, you'll import it. You won't see it here, but you'll see it here. 
So that's what I meant by yes and no. Yes, you can import it, but it's not going to show up in the GUI, only on the phone. Very good question. I actually meant to show that. So thank you for reminding me. So his question was, how do you push this to multiple users? So there's, so there's really two ways. If, well, let me back up. First, I have to build it on the admin side. <clears throat> so if I'm going to push this, I go to tools, I go to switchboard layout. We're gonna build new, new admin. So I'm in the admin section, I went to tools, I went to switchboard layouts, I gave it a new name, and then we'll just bring in two, save. <coughs> hmm. So now that I've gone to tools, and built that layout, I've got two options here. I can go to setup and templates. And so if this was a new install, this is how I would do it from the, from the beginning. When I go through setting up the profiles, when I go to assignments, I have switchboard layouts and this is where I can add what I just created. So I put that in the template, and just by default I can say this is the one that's active when they open it. So any extension that I build with this template will automatically get this layout. So that's doing it on the front end. Now let's say, hey, I've got all these phones already built, this is a new feature, or I forgot. You can go to manage extensions, bulk modify, and now this is going to look just like the template, but what this is is kind of after the fact. So now it's like, oh, I forgot to add that layout, or I want to add this layout to someone else. You know, I forgot to give it to Kurt. So I'll say, all right, Kurt and whoever else I have listed here, I go to assignment, switchboard layouts, and just like what we saw, I can say this, he gets the new layout. So this is how you would do it after the fact. And then when I hit save, he gets that menu too. So you can do it beforehand or after. Thank you. Yeah, he's got like 600 users on his system, so he has to break that up some. <clears throat> Thank you, because I meant to cover that because I wanted to show you how you could do that in the, uh, the tools. So we're coming up on the hour. Uh, we've done the demo. I showed how to build the components. I showed you how to build the switchboard. Um, any other questions before we wrap up? Or any, anything on the switchboard, the components that you can add in the switchboard? I will kind of give a shout out to something new that engineering and product management's done. Here, where you see all these, these are tours, these are links. Before, this was just a menu that you could click on. It was just another way to go through like setup tools and reporting. We actually replaced that with these tours. So we're highlighting like new features in the box. So like the Q wall board, if you didn't know what that was, you could actually click on that and it gives you, tells you where that feature is in the box and how it's used, so. Is there a way to turn that off? Not yet, somebody requested that yesterday. Hey, I want that feature. <laughs> uh, somebody asked for that. Somebody submitted a request yesterday for that. So it's the right now, no. But feel free to submit another feature request if they start seeing these come in at the same time. That'll, that'll add some weight to it. But I do like it. I know what you're saying. You're the one that has to support it. You don't want to be bombarded by, hey, I want these new features. But I think it's really cool that you can see what's there and where it's used. Okay.
I will let them know. No, no, that's, yeah, that's, right now it's pretty much just computers and laptops. Yeah, that's it. So I'll open the floor up for questions. Um, you're more than welcome to come up here and play with the switchboard. You're more than welcome to come play with the phones. We actually have a, you saw that we had a live SIP trunk, so if you want to call in and play, you can do that. Or call out and call a loved one, phone home. Any other questions on switchboard, switch box? Yes, sir. Yes, if you use peered switch boxes. There's two, ways, there's two ways to set up peering. You can go through VoIP providers where you just connect two boxes together, and it's really just used for call routing. You don't really, you do not get what you just asked. You don't get presence and status information. If you use peered switch boxes, this way, as long as you have your DNS set up properly, will actually, um, send, presence, status, and chat back and forth between. So yes, if you do it this way and your DNS in order is in order, it'll pass that information. Any other questions? Everyone ready for lunch? <laughs> All right. Well, if you think of anything else, you're more than welcome to come up here and play. I think there's a little break before the next speaker. Like I said, you're more than welcome to play with this before I tear it down. Thank you for coming to my presentation. Have a good, sh have a good conference here this week. And again, stop by our booth if you have any other questions after the fact. So thank you, guys.